Alright, this is lesson 7.6, Applications of Rational Expressions. This is our last section of Unit 7 in uh, Rational Expressions and Equations. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a lot of the skills that we've learned thus far and uh, combining them to answer some of these real-world applications involving rational expressions. Okay? Uh, I find students sometimes struggle with uh, these word problems. So I'm going to try to break them down to three different types and hopefully give you some uh, strategies to deal with these. All right. So three different types that you're going to see um, are the following here. So it says rational expressions can be used to solve a variety of real world problems, including those involving motion. That'll be the first one we look at. Work. And proportion. All right, so let's dive into one right here. It says uh, solving problems involving motion. So a boat travels at an average speed of 15 kilometers per hour in still water. The boat travels 12 kilometers downstream in the same time as it travels 8 kilometers upstream. Determine the average speed of the current. Well, before we even get started here, I want you to recall something that you probably learned in uh, science at some point, or you might even be dealing with in physics right now, and that's that time is equal to distance divided by speed. And so we're going to use that to help ourselves here. Okay? So of course, in this question, what we see is that the boat's clearly going faster downstream because it is supported by the current, uh, versus when it's going upstream, it's going against the current. So what I like to do for this type of a question, and uh, it's up to you, you may be able to do this without, is I like to make myself a little bit of a, uh, a chart. Okay? So I'm going to draw a chart here, like so. Giving you lots of uh, space on this page, so you should be able to make it nice and big, like so. Okay, now on the left hand side here, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have some categories. The first category is going to be distance, and that's measured in kilometers. We are going to have average speed next, and that's measured in kilometers per hour. And the last one we're going to have is time. And if I come back up here to the recall statement that we have, time is going to be equal to d over s. So I want you to just keep that in mind. Time is measured in hours. So I'm going to use this fact up here in a second. Now uh, what am I going to have uh, going across the top? I'm going to have the downstream scenario. And I'm going to have the upstream scenario. So because they tell us right here that uh, in terms of distance, that they can travel going downstream 12 kilometers in the same time it takes to go upstream 8, you can fill that in. So we know that the distance is 12 downstream, 8 upstream. In terms of speed, well, let's arbitrarily go and say that x is the speed of the current. So I'll do just a little let statement over here. Let x equal the speed of the current. Well, if we know right up here that the boat normally goes at 15 kilometers an hour, we should then have to add x to the speed, right? Because it's going to go faster. So I'm going to write this as 15 plus x for the downstream. In terms of upstream, well, you just do the opposite, right? Because we're going against that um, uh, current. So I'm going to have 15 minus x, like so. Okay. Now, in terms of this question, I don't really know anything about time. But I can use this equation up here to help me. I know that time is equal to distance. I'm going to take this and write 12 over 15 plus x. And over here, I'm going to write this as 8 all divided by 15 minus x. Now, since they said that the times are equal, now what I can do is I can take this information right here, 1 and 2, and set those equal to one another and try and solve for x. So that's the tough part of the question. The, uh, the pure arithmetic here, the solving, is going to be um, fairly easy. It's just understanding that since we know that these times are equal, we can set them uh, equal to one another, and then go and solve. So I have 12 all over 15 plus x is equal to 8 onto 15 minus x, like so. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to achieve a common denominator. Uh, what you can do when you have this a over b is equal to c over d is you can just use that method that I've called uh, cross multiplication here if you wish. So I'll now have 12 all multiplied by 15 minus x is equal to 8 all multiplied by 15 plus x. If you want to go through the motions of actually going and getting a common denominator, you'll see that you'll just end up at the same stage I do. I've just kind of saved you a little bit of work.
Now we will go and solve this. 12 times 15 is 180 minus 12x. So I've used the distributive property here and here. I'll do the same thing on the other side. 8 times 15 is 120 plus 8x. Now from here I'm going to go and gather my like terms. I'm going to move the x's to the right hand side so that will give me a positive 20x over here. I'll subtract the 120 from both sides giving me 60. Lastly if you divide by 20 we see that x is equal to 3. And of course what did x represent? x represented the speed of the current. So the speed of the current is 3 kilometers per hour. Okay? So that's the first type of a question. Almost all of them that involve motion are going to fall into that category. And so one of the tips that I gave you for that is that uh, it may help if you uh, make a little table like so. Okay? So let's move on to the next page. Example 2 is going to be solving problems involving work. All right? So uh, here's a scenario that we have. Uh, Paul can paint a garage door in three hours. When Paul and Graham work together, they can paint the same garage door in one hour. How long would it take for uh, Graham to paint the garage door on his own? All right. So what we need to do here is we need to break it down into what are some things that we know. All right. Before I even do that, I'm going to start out with a let statement. okay? Because I'm going to be talking about some variables here, so make sure that we know what uh, those variables are. So I'm going to let t equal the uh, hours of time it takes Graham to paint on his own. Because of course that's what we're trying to figure out in this question, right? That was what this last sentence said. So therefore, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to break down this into just a little tiny table, okay? Because I think that'll give you a better picture kind of what's going on. How can you combine all this information together? Well, let's uh, let's take a look here. So I'm going to break this down. We'll have time right here. We'll have the amount Paul can paint. And uh, in the next one, I'm going to have the amount Graham can paint. And the last one I'm going to have, I'll just write uh, painting together. Because when you think back to this question, right, they tell you a little bit about what Paul can do and what they can do together. And we're trying to find out what Graham can do on his own. So what do I know? Well, I'm going to break this down into uh, the, these work problems into kind of ratios, right? So if I break things down into one hour, what can we figure out in terms of one hour? Well, this, this question says that Paul can paint a garage door in three hours. So we'd have to assume then that, let's, let's assume that he's going to paint at the same rate, that he could paint one third of the door in one hour. Hopefully that makes sense to you, right? Because if you just multiply that by three, then he'd have the entire door done. All right? Now, we know that when they work together in one hour here, it says that they can finish the whole door. So that means when they paint together, how much of the door can they finish? They can finish one whole door. But we don't know what Graham's going to be able to do in terms of uh, in one hour. So as a result, I'm going to use this t variable. I know that it's going to be 1 over something t. Okay? Just like Paul over here was 1 over 3, Graham's going to be 1 over t. Okay? But you can make a little equation with this information that we have right here. Because we know that when Paul paints at, uh, he can do basically a third of a door in an hour. Graham's going to be able to do, we don't know what portion of a door in an hour, but we know when we add those two quantities together, that equals one full door in one hour. So I'm going to use that to make my little equation. So again, that is the tough part of this question. The crunching of the numbers I'm going to do right down here isn't going to be too bad. All right, so let's give this thing a try. We have one third, so that's the amount that Paul can paint in an hour. We have 1 over t, that's the unknown amount that Graham can paint in an hour. But we know when we add Graham and Paul together, that in one hour they can paint an entire door. So now I'm going to try and crunch these numbers. So when you have three different uh, terms like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and achieve a common denominator. My common denominator this time is 3t. So I'll write everything over 3t. If you recall, once we have a common denominator, then we can just go and get rid of that denominator. So what do you have to multiply this 3 by? You have to multiply it by a t. So 1 times t is t. t times 3 is 3t, so this becomes a 3. And right up here, you have to multiply the 1 by 3t, so this gives me 3t. Okay. Now, going and getting rid of the denominator now, we have t plus 3 is equal to 3t. 
gathering my like terms, I will move the t to the uh, right hand side here that gives me two t's is equal to three or t is equal to three over two. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that it would take gram approximately uh, since we know that t is equal to 1.5, okay, remember what t represents, that represented the amount of time it would take him to paint on his own. So therefore we found that t is equal to 1.5, that tells us that it will take gram one and a half hours, you can write that however you want, one hour is 30 minutes, to paint the garage door on his phone. Okay. So that concludes that uh, question. Let's go to the last uh, type that you'll come up against, and that's solving questions uh, involving proportion. Okay. So uh, here we have one that looks uh, pretty simple, and it, it turns out to be uh, not a lot of work here. Uh, how much lemon juice must be added to two liters of water to make a lemonade solution that contains 20% lemon juice? Okay. So fairly straightforward. Uh, what I'm going to do again, like I have been, is I'm going to use a let statement to get myself going here. So I'm going to let V equal the volume of lemon juice added. Okay, and that'll be, of course, in terms of liters. So in terms of this question, what we know is we know something about the total volume. The total volume. of the solution must be V plus the original two liters. So I can say that in terms of the total, V plus two would have to be the total like so. Okay. So now in general, if we think about this, we know that the volume, we can use a little ratio here, and so this is where the proportion comes in. The volume of lemon juice divided by the total volume, according to this question, must be in the ratio of 20%. Well, 20%, as we know, that is the same thing as 20 out of 100. Right? So that's how we set this thing up. Well, we've already figured out, though, what all these variables are. The volume of lemon juice, how much lemon juice are we putting in, we said was V. And we know that there was 2 liters to start, so that's where I get the V plus 2 down here. So we have the amount of lemon juice I put in plus the original amount of water. V plus 2 is equal to this 20 over 100. So from here, it's just a, mat a matter of uh, crunching these numbers. Again, since I have a, a over B is equal to C over D, I'm just going to cross multiply here. I get V times 100 is equal to 20 onto V plus 2. This gives me 100 V. Normally, write the coefficient out in front. This gives me 20 V plus 40. Gathering my like terms, I have 80 V is equal to 40. And dividing by 80, we get V is equal to 1. So what does that mean? Well, that means, in terms of this question, one half a liter of lemon juice must be added to make a lemonade solution that maintains that ratio that contains 20% lemon juice. Okay, so that's the third example. We've gone over ones involving proportion, work, and motion. Uh, when you go and attempt to do some of these questions, uh, I want to make sure that you try all of them if you can. Uh, in addition to that, I would suggest you have your notes sitting right beside you. Make sure you identify which one of these qu three questions it falls into, motion, work, or proportion. Uh, use my examples as somewhat of a template to get yourself going. And then uh, I'm pretty confident that once you've done a couple, you should start getting used to these and you'll be able to uh, work on these on your own. Okay? So that concludes this lesson and uh, concludes Unit 7.